Hello everyone, and welcome to the Qualifiers Map Pool Showcase video for Cope Cup. My name is Suikun3, one of the hosts and map poolers for this tournament. I would like to congratulate each and every one of you who have made it this far by being on your respective country's team. Now the Qualifiers Map Pool consists of 10 maps, with 4 Nomads, 2 Hiddens, 2 Hard Rocks, and 2 Double Times. Each team will play through the Qualifiers Pool in a Qualifier Lobby one time and one time only, so you'd better make it count. Now without further ado, let's get into the pool. It's actually quite fitting, the title of this song. Nomad 1s are often by far the most generic maps in a regular pool, and while going back to square one doesn't differ in that aspect, it makes up for it with its incredible consistency across the entire map. If you take a look at the difficulty graph, you'll find there's almost no low points or high peaks. It's simple, but it's genuine. It's going to seriously test your ability to keep your raw aim in check for a long period of time, and though Nomad 1s are a bit of a broken record, it's at least not entirely aimed, with occasional standard bursts here or there. Originally mapped for Corsace 2020, though Yaslo's Critical Crystal is not nearly as popular as its ranked counterpart, it's much more honed in on the raw skills you expect to test from a Nomad 2. Nearly every burst and stream changes in spacing, so your flow aim is tested very harshly. Though it certainly focuses more on controlling your aim and has few long streams, Critical Crystal rarely lets up, as there's often little to no windows after streams to regain stamina before the next pops up, so the more stamina capped players should still find themselves challenged. Don't forget to skip the intro either. Nomad 3 brings insane heat with its incredibly technical mapping style. In only 2 minutes, this map packs a lot of what you'd expect from any tech map. From slider jumps, crazy snaking sliders, heavy slider velocity changes, and slider streams to boot. But watch out for that halfway mark when the song starts to speed up, because when that climax hits, the map switches to a one third style of tech and alt that will surely trip up players who weren't prepared for it. The last Nomad is not only our alternating map, but also our longest map in the pool. Kaguya Hime, by KW Aim Suck as Fuck, aka the person who really likes Astolfo, but really, who doesn't, focuses on testing all sorts of curse control with its 4 minutes of gameplay. With a plethora of varied cut streams and circle patterns, you'll be prone to missing entire patterns and tanking your score in just one second. The song alternates between very flowing centric sections, like in the courses, to very snap aim sections within some of the one third sections that seem to come out of nowhere. This map is sure to make those with control over both hands shine. Hidden One Catastrophe is the first of many custom maps created just for this tournament. Mapped by Rollpan, this map boasts incredibly awkward aim patterns scattered throughout, with squares, and shaped patterns, and incredibly obtuse jumps that will surely be difficult for any player that isn't comfortable with both the mod and the aim type. There are some 200 BPM bursts and light finger control patterns, but that's nothing compared to the sheer aim control that's needed to tackle a map like this. 
I hope you have players in your team that eat this stuff like it's breakfast, because you're going to need that type of confidence to do well on this map. This approach rate 8 hidden 2 tests the combination of your pattern recognition and linear aim skills to navigate through the many rhythms and patterns that were prevalent throughout 2009 ranked maps, which can be an absolute nightmare for players that are unfamiliar with these types of maps, especially with the hidden mod. The map is incredibly short, clocking in just a minute and 40 seconds in length, but doesn't let up with its ever-changing pattern types and slider velocities. Make sure you have mastery of this before going to your qualifiers lobby, because every note counts on a map this short. With Hard Rock 1, the name of the game is Your Aim, though it differs itself from Nomad 1 in that it combines lots of linear, awkward aim right next to raw snap aim, jumps over lap each other, and switch between different types of aim at the drop of a hat. You're expected to keep both your eyes and cursor in check. Even outside of the courses, there are many patterns that an unwary player could easily mess up on. And of course, what would a good bandmate song be without a kick-ass guitar solo featuring a one-third cut pattern and an OD10 stream to test your accuracy? Many countries will struggle to put together a good 4-player roster for a map like this, surely. If Hard Rock 1 wasn't testing your accuracy enough, Magnolia certainly will. Even in spite of its relatively tame first half, the 160 BPM burst patterns are too long to act on a sight read, and too short to settle you in for the rest of the map. Just looking at the global leaderboards tells you all you need to know about the rhythmic complexity. However, it's the second half of the map where things get real. Here you see cursor control and slider aim in droves, exacerbated by the small circle size. It's this section which makes or breaks your score, because missing here could be the difference between a 300k score and an FC. Engage might seem like a generic DT consistency map, but if you look at it closer, you'll see how much spicier it really is. The map has several long single tap jump sections, composed of obtuse angles and wide spacing, which can get very uncomfortable. The map is littered with finger control sections, kick sliders, and bursts that will speed cap many players. 255 BPM shouldn't be a problem for most double time specialists, but this map is definitely not the walk in the park that you might expect from a DQ1. And our final map, the finger control and stamina map you'll commonly find in a DT pool. Black Lair gets right into stamina draining 225 BPM streams, with some doubles mixed in. The latter half of the map features several consecutive 9 note bursts, which I sure hope you have enough stamina to power through. This map might seem easy to a lot of you, and it's short, and you might do really well when you're practicing, but with tournament nerves, good luck. You'll need it. 